Welcome to part four of our live training session here with our 2003 Subaru WRX. In this training tutorial, we're gonna be focusing our attention on working with our boost control, learning how the closed loop routine works, learning how to set our boost targets properly, and working with our duty cycle tables to command the boost solenoid to achieve the boost that we're after. There's gonna be a system balance that we're gonna be trying to achieve, making sure that we have the correct duty cycle values program in our tables to achieve the target boost that we're after, and making sure that the ECU is gonna be happy and not trying to work with the closed loop feedback back control too aggressively. There's a lot to talk about and cover in this video. Let's jump in so we can check out working with our boost control. Welcome back to our live training session here with our Subaru WRX. Now in the last video, we went through the spark calibration process. This video we're going to be focusing on doing our boost control. Now within the boost control, we have to go in and program and the target desired boost that we like to run at and then make sure that all of the background tables associated with boost control are accounted for meaning we have a minimum and maximum wastegate duty cycle table that we have to make sure are right to achieve the desired target boost that we're after so that the ECU has to make minimal adjustments to those wastegate duty cycle values. It improves the tracking of the boost control and improves just making sure you're hitting the boost target, not undershooting, not overshooting, and creating oscillations or any kind of undesirable side effects of working with the boost control routine. As long as you follow everything we go and do in this video, you'll be able to replicate this on your vehicle with great results. Now, one thing that I wanna point out before we start off and taking a look at how to set up the boost control and all of the different things uh, that we need to deal with in this training tutorial, I wanna talk about um, in the previous video, when we were doing our spark tuning. Let's jump into Megalog Viewer right now so we can just discuss this real quick. We can see the boost was super, super lazy. And I think I mentioned that in that training video. If we take a look here at something like 4,000 RPM, we were only getting two pounds of boost. Now, going up here to the red line, about 6,500 or so, we were hitting about 11, 12 pounds of boost. That is extremely low. The wastegate actuator should have been anywhere between 15 to maybe 18 PSI on this particular turbo. So I did a boost leak check just to verify that there was no boost leaks, which there weren't. I tested up to about 40 pounds of boost. Within the boost leak check, everything was good. The problem that I ended up finding was that the actuator arm uh, on the turbocharger, and I have it coming up on screen right now, wasn't adjusted enough. There was actually not enough preload on the actuator arm. And what was happening was the flapper valve or the flapper door on our internal wastegate was prematurely blowing open and not staying shut on the valve seat, essentially creating an exhaust leak that you couldn't hear or see. And the boost leak check wouldn't have anything to do with that exhaust leak. So essentially what was happening is we were bypassing too much pressure and flow across the turbine wheel and it wasn't spinning it quick enough. We were getting this really lazy performance out of this turbo um, and I knew something was wrong. So I adjusted that and actually tested it off camera to make sure that it was going to work before we started this train tutorial and we could actually go through the boost control properly. Now we should be building about 15, 16, 17 pounds of boost off the actuator. We're gonna do a pool here to kind of baseline and see where we're at. Then we're gonna go in and actually start to adjust the boost control routine from that point. So again, if you have really lackluster or lazy performance from a turbo that you're expecting to, to perform much better and you have an internal wastegate, don't be afraid to check the preload on your internal wastegate actuator arm. In this case, that was the direct problem we were having with the car. And as soon as I adjusted that, a few more turns of preload, everything went, went into uh, where it should be and the spool came back greatly. So we're gonna be looking at that here, just do our own baseline pull and evaluate everything. Now, along with the boost control, we are also gonna have to take a look at fuel and spark timing. Now, in the last few videos, we've optimized that. That was off the wastegate actuator level with a turbo that was spooling relatively lazy. Now that we have the turbo performing more optimally and coming up into boost much quicker, we just need to make sure that everything's gonna be right with that. So we'll have to revisit what we're doing here in the speed density table if we need to add more fuel. We'll have to see, uh, and also in the actual main spark timing table, do we need to back some timing away because we're building a boost quicker? We'll see what happens. We're not gonna make any changes into fuel or spark timing here for the very first pool. There are some things I wanna go in and change within the boost control uh, parameters to make sure that we're gonna be having good success here doing the very first pool. Let's just go quickly over what we need to go and focus on for the boost control routine. Then we'll go in and actually upload this change and then we'll go to our pool and see what we have here for kind of the baseline and the starting point. In our boost control target, we're gonna find that we have a target boost. This target boost table here, um, when we were building our base file, we set this to approximately 15 PSI 
at roughly 4,000 RPM and higher because this is a laggy turbo. We'll find below that we were targeting some kind of a reasonable uh, lower RPM here. We can see in these higher throttle angles, we were targeting a little bit uh, lower boost level because we know we're not going to build the boost at that point. We're not going to spool up and build that. Um, so this should be a reasonable starting point in terms of boost target for this lazier, laggier turbo. Now the best thing that you could do as you were doing your fuel and spark tuning process is to actually go in after doing your data capture and you had reasonable spool again off your actuator level, you could go in RPM point by RPM point. So you can go here at roughly 2000 where you're starting out. What kind of boost did you build? You want to have your boost maybe here in your target table about 2-3 PSI higher than what you found at that level here. So right now we're actually commanding 6 and 8 PSI. That's going to be way too much. Now this is with the laggier setup here where the... Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.